Do you suffer from poor eyesight? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. I wish I had straight hair. Blonde hair would be nice. I would love to have freckles. They can make people just, just look really cute. I wish I was taller. I wish I was shorter. I'm very tall for my age and I feel really like lanky and like a really tall and awkward. I wish I was thinner. I wish I was stronger. To play like more sports and like be involved in more things. I would like to have lighter skin. Um, it looks, you know, well, oh my god, this is so difficult, I'm sorry. I would like to have darker skin. I have really pale skin, so it'll stick out. Sometimes I wish I had blue eyes. Blue eyes would be nice. I'd like to have smaller breasts. I was the first girl in my class to get a bra. Just kind of want to fit in. Um, I think that I'd like to have curly hair. I wish I had straight hair. The first time I encountered the word eyesight was in Max Lucado's book, Life to the Full. Eyesight with an I is not the same as eyesight, which starts with the letter E. It is not a matter of distorted vision being corrected by lenses. It is about self-love. It can blur your view of yourself. That leads to seeing the world perhaps far from being real. You can create your own reality that may hurt you more than others. In today's gospel, a scribe asks Jesus, which of the laws is greater than others? Jesus summarizes the law in Hebrew scriptures, or the Mosaic law, of 613 precepts into two commands, to love God and to love one's neighbor as oneself. Jesus quotes these from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, respectively. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Loving oneself is key to loving others. And when you are able to love others, you are concretely manifesting your love for God. Everything else about loving God, our piety, our daily masses, our scripture readings and rosaries, will have genuine meaning. We often read or hear statements like, You cannot love another person if you do not have a healthy love of yourself. Or, You cannot give what you don't have. Loving oneself influences our decisions in life, from looking for lifetime partners to how we cope with life's problems. This kind of loving oneself is not selfish and self-centered, but many of us vacillate between seeing themselves too highly, steeped in arrogance and cockiness for having achieved a state of material prosperity, for example, to a deeply low self-esteem for not possessing the qualities others have. Self-elevation and self-depreciation are both unhealthy to a genuine and consistent loving of our neighbor. The cosmetics industry is a very profitable industry, except perhaps during lockdowns in a pandemic. On second thought, all the more, one may need cosmetics to prop up self-esteem. But in the negative, people chase status symbols to declare that they have arrived. The latest car models, branded clothes, bags, and shoes, all these are part of enhancing one's image because of one's inner fears and longing for acceptance and recognition. When I was first sent to an international meeting by the multinational bank that I was working for decades ago, I had a cheap suit made by a tailoring shop. When I got it and tried it on, I noticed a famous label sewn inside the suit that would make it look like it was bought in a Gucci shop. Similarly, similarly, you can find cheap imitations of famous brands from Rolex watches to Hermes ladies bags in many street markets of big cities. Suicide levels are up. Use of drugs and alcohol among the young and not so young have risen. It is perhaps because many people have little love for themselves and have given up hope that they can be loved. Indeed, it will be difficult for us to love others if we are too busy worrying if we can be accepted as we are and loved by others. Our behavior in our church, renewal community, and workplace, the way we relate to people, can be filled with so much suspicion that we resort to self-pity and emotional flagellation. Instead of people feeling blessed, we turn them off because we project on them our own self-inflicted emotional pains. One's attitude should be this, 
when my own eye sight is clear, when I love myself in a healthy way, I'm able to reach out and love others too. I'm able to accept my own goodness and weaknesses and not hide them from others. It is not my problem anymore if others do not think well of me. I'm not concerned of other people's opinions in so much as I am concerned with God's opinion of me. When I have the right eye sight, I have more time to think of how I can be of help to others. I can truly begin to love others as I love myself because I believe that what matters is God mattering in my life. And then I become more in love with God. It is comforting to know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, fill me with your love so that I may also have a healthy love of myself too. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.